Hi, I'm Elizabeth Huttinger from Minobi Foundation. We have an exciting social enterprise ready to go that can eliminate human schistosomiasis through village-based aquaculture. Schisto is a helminth infection caught in third world rivers and lakes. By affecting one billion people, it's global disease number four. Africa is the only part of the world where schisto is considered out of control. West Africa in blue is worst hit, and I'll explain why. First, know that there is a treatment, but this man, like many others, is so frequently exposed that Biltricide has not left him disease-free because it doesn't prevent reinfection. In West Africa, where childhood prevalence can exceed 50%, when the drug is finished, children catch new parasites as soon as they have contact with the water. How does schisto get transmitted? It starts with Sir Kerry, a larva that bores its way through human skin. In our bodies, schistosomes lodge in the vein, uniting liver and intestine, and produce 400 eggs a day. Some end up in the liver, causing infection, and the rest are eliminated, ending up back in the water supply to become myricidia that can only survive in the snail, where each myricidium makes a thousand new cercari, flooding into the water and looking for the human host. This is the Diama Dam. It was built in 1986 to keep brackish water from seeping upriver into the farmland. Tragically, it created a man-made disaster. Shortly after its completion, the rate of schisto upriver went from 0 to 90% prevalence in two years' time. Here is the focal point, a freshwater prawn known as Macrobachium. It lives in fresh water but breeds in brackish water. Before the dam, this prawn was abundant. The only dietary source of calcium for the prawn's tough shell are snails. Prawns actually prefer eating snails to any other food. Today we understand that when the dam prevented the prawns from reaching their mating ground, they became extinct. Then, without a predator, the snail population exploded and a new kind of schisto appeared where none had existed. Our approach in eliminating schistosomiasis is to restore the natural ecosystem and break the cycle of disease. The macrobrachian can be bred in a hatchery and then cultivated commercially by village women, free range and organically grown. What happens to schisto? Without the snail, the life cycle is interrupted and schistosomiasis can no longer exist. What are the benefits of this strategy? We can eliminate schistosomiasis. Water quality will be improved. Prawns are a new source of dietary protein. Commerce reduces poverty. Veterinary schisto is eliminated. And prawn waste can be recycled into fertilizer. What are the risks? Snails will disappear because prawns eat snails indiscriminately. There's a risk of crop loss. Some will escape, some will be poached. This project was really not feasible until now for three reasons. First, it wasn't possible to support hundreds of growers before text messaging came to rural Africa. Second, the organic seafood movement has come of age. Third is this hatchery in Richard Toll. We can't change the reason prawns got extinct, but we can manage their return. The arrow points to the tank where prawns are hatched. The eight ponds have decreasing rates of salinity, so that when the fingerlings are ready to be released, they're fully adapted to fresh water. Here are the breeding tanks. Here is one of the eight ponds. On this map, we've plotted 21 villages that we visited that can engage in aquaculture. From the ground, these communities look like this. Virtually all of the waterways are interconnected. And this is the village business office, a cell phone. With a micro loan, this grower can buy fingerlings for pennies and then sell them as organically raised prawns six months later. Free-ranging prawns are caught in traps then bundled live in mesh bags. Our processing plant, which doesn't exist yet, and the shipping center will both meet USDA and European food quality standards. The key to sustainable elimination of schisto for the rural poor is to make free-range prawn farming a good business for them. And that is successful social enterprise. <laughs>